Joining me now to help us unpack it all is Dan McTeague, former Liberal MP and President of Canadians for Affordable Energy. Dan, welcome. I uh, hope you've been taking in the interesting conversations at COP26. Uh, a lot of interesting conversations. Uh, well, we certainly hope that someday they can actually be rooted in reality. But be as it may, uh, it was a very interesting time uh, to hear the great notions that were being uh, displayed and discussed uh, and pledged, uh, ironically, by countries that perhaps uh, aren't so willing to make those same pledges directly uh, and forcibly with consequences to their own electorate. Okay, well, let's, let's start with some of the main takeaways from the climate conference. What did you feel were, were these main takeaways? Well, I think the, the, the uh, CONFAP really struggled to maintain what it had achieved at Paris in 2016, so five years ago. And it, uh, it would appear that the same kind of routine, you know, you've mentioned you've been to these before, I've seen many of these before, going back to my days as a parliamentarian, back to Kyoto in 1997. Uh, you know, it, it, it seems that we tend to go through this whole process of explaining there's a problem, uh, you know, coming out with hyperbole about, you know, if we don't do something, the world is going to come to an end as we understand it. Uh, then, of course, uh, all sorts of ideas that, uh, uh, you know, have countries saying, yeah, we might commit to something. Then, of course, going right to the wire as they did uh, and then saying, you know, this is not going to work. And then the last second, going after the two weeks, they finally come up with some kind of a decision, a statement, which everybody can agree to. Uh, in the end, it, it probably doesn't have or hold much value, uh, save and accept for countries uh, that have already experienced some of the punishing effects, and I think here of UK and Germany, mm -hmm. uh, of, of what uh, what has been proposed in the past. So once these things start to roll out and people get a better understanding of what's involved, I think uh, they have a very different approach. What One of the takeaways for me, though, is even the signatories. I mean, we know China, Russia, we know Australia, uh, you know, we know India make these pledges, but are, of course, saying so, you know, with uh, uh, with the fingers tied behind their backs, crossed as they are saying, you know, this is nice to say these things. We don't want to make an international embarrassment of ourselves. But realistically, none of them uh, are going to be able to achieve the lofty goals that they're suggesting and certainly not without substantial uh, you know, uh, drawbacks in uh, the advancement of their societies. So I think for a lot of people, you know, a lot of good heartfelt stuff, but uh, most of it, I think when it's actually subject to the acid test of reality, fails miserably on both sides, by the way. Right. Uh, so for us, all those who are saying we're going too far to those who are saying you haven't gone far enough, I think everybody's going to walk away with a saying, you know, that was a two week event. It's behind us. It won't be news in the next three or four weeks, except right. for those countries that decide to we, impose we, it on their own. We only have 30 seconds before commercial, but um, what were players like China up to at this conference? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, China's always very quick at uh, pointing out uh, the great things that they're doing, that they're going to be reducing their coal production in other parts of the world as a means of reducing their uh, carbon footprint. But at the same time, not really coming out and making any displays about the fact that, well, I mean, they're going to be increasing coal production, aren't they? And, yes. Uh, there okay, are I'm going to pause you there. we got to cut to commercial. We'll be right back. Yeah.